Hello and welcome to Roving Report, a program that gives you an overview of the developments in India's northeast region. I'm your host Chandrakala and the highlights of today's program are The 17th Karmapa made his maiden visit to Arunachal Pradesh Northeast India Choral Competition held in New Delhi Wilbong Food Fest draws foodies from across Shillong and Northeast. And Hornbin Festival gets underway in Dimapur. Large number of Buddhist monks in Arunachal Pradesh throng to have a glimpse and seek blessings of Karmapa, the head of the 900-year-old Karma Kagyu lineage and guide to millions of Buddhists around the world who was on his visit to Tawang, where most of the Buddhist population of the state resides. Lama visited the state on the request of the Chief Minister of Arunachal Pradesh, Pema Khandu and Ministry of State for Home Affairs, Kiran Rijiju. We bring you a report. Tawang Monastery or Tawang Gompa in Arunachal Pradesh is home to more than 500 monks. The crown of Buddhism in Arunachal Pradesh, it forms the core of Lamaistic faith of the Mahayana school of Buddhism, making it the largest monastery of India and the second largest in Asia. Recently, Karmapa, head of the 900-year-old Karma Kaigyu lineage and guide to millions of Buddhists around the world, was given a rousing welcome on his arrival to Tawang, Arunachal Pradesh. Hundreds of followers of Buddhism, including Buddhist monks from across the state, gathered at the Tawang Monastery and paid their reverence to Karmapa. The Monpa people were seen listening to his preaching sessions. It is worth mentioning that the last visit was by the third Karmapa 900 years ago and since then, Buddhist followers were eagerly waiting for this auspicious day. The 17th Gwalwang Karmapa Ogyan Trinle Dorje was on his maiden visit to Arunachal Pradesh, accompanied by the Chief Minister Pema Khandu and Minister of State for Home Affairs Kiran Rijiju. Besides holding prayers and preaching sessions, he also interacted with intellectuals, teachers and scholars at the Kala Wangpo Hall in the state. He also interacted with local residents and gave them sermons on life. Karmapa called upon the Buddhist communities to remain in harmony and prevent outside forces from hampering its progress in Monul, the land of the local Monpa people. I'm also happy and also Lots of people arrived and uh, uh, give a very warm welcome. I want, I feel very happy. We know uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama. Uh, he personal have have personal con connection with this area because six Dalai Lama born in this area. ये बहुत ऐतिहासिक है और ये कर्मपा धर्म गुरु है ये कोई पॉलिटिकल लीडर नहीं है धर्म गुरु है और इस धर्म गुरु को आज सारा हमारा अरुणाचल के जो जितना भी हमारा वासी है उनको आज आशीर्वाद प्राप्त हुआ और कर्मपा क्योंकि एक धर्म गुरु है उसका बहुत सालों से यहाँ नहीं आ पाया इसलिए काफी लोग दुखी थे लेकिन आज के दिन में अरुणाचल प्रदेश और खास करके जो बहुत समुदाय हैं बहुत धन्य महसूस कर रहे हैं कि आज परंतु पावन कर्मापा का यहाँ पदार्पण हुआ और उसका आशीर्वाद प्राप्त हुआ। The famous traditional Monpa dance and Yak Cham or the Yak dance was also put on show by the locals with enthralled the visitors. The effort on part of the centre to invite such a spiritual leader to the region will help revive the ritualistic culture of Buddhist people and retain the community's peace and harmony as well. People in national capital New Delhi witnessed a unique choral competition organised by the Tanghul Christian Charitable Trust recently. Take a look.
the fifth edition of the Northeast India Choral Singing Competition was recently held in the national capital, wherein 12 Northeast churches from Delhi participated. The event, based on the theme of togetherness in culture and music, was organized by Tangkhul Christian Charitable Trust. The event was graced by World Women Boxing Champion and member of Rajya Sabha, MC Marigong. From the Northeast uh, community, the society came and uh, participated in the choral uh, 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 um, competition. So it's quite uh, nice and I hope everyone is enjoying and you know, they are showing the talent and uh, performing. The event aimed to bring together all the Northeast churches on a single platform and share the fellowship through culture and music. This is the fifth version of a Northeast uh, choral competitions. Uh, the basic purpose of organizing this program is to bring together Northeast churches and fellowships into one platform where we can share the fellowship through culture and music. This will help us to strengthen our fellowship with one another and strengthen the churches of Northeast so that through this we can interact with mainstream society and bring us oneness in these nations. The event saw a huge gathering of people. People from the region as well as other parts of the country witnessed the contest. Twelve churches and fellowships based in Delhi competed for the most coveted title, giving their best performances. Delhi, our Baptist church was adjudged the winner. It was awarded a cash prize of rupees 3 lakh. It was amazing actually. I, I really had a good time uh, practicing for the last couple of weeks. And then it gave me uh, the opportunity to mingle with my tribe. Uh, people as well because uh, in a city like Delhi everybody is like busy with their own uh, work and all that so we got the opportunity to gather together and you know worship together and all that so it was really amazing <laughs> yeah it was actually very great to be here especially the choir it's such a display of amazing talent so I'm so glad to be here Apart from the competition, the event also saw live performances from well-known music bands from the region. Such platforms help to identify the talents and skills of people and help the community and the society to understand the importance of oneness and togetherness of life. Let us now take a look at some of the events that made news in the Northeast recently. Two day long 18 home psychiatry level talks between India and Bangladesh was recently held. The Indian delegation was led by home secretary Rajiv Merisi and Bangladesh delegation was led by senior secretary Ministry of Home Affairs Bangladesh Dr. Mohammad Mozamil Haq Khan. During the meeting, two sides discussed about working on institutional arrangements, security-related issues, cooperation in prevention of illegal activities along the borders, border management issues. The talks were held in cordial atmosphere and conducive to greater cooperation between the two countries. Both sides also discussed to strengthen anti terror mechanism besides increasing cooperation to deal with border crimes. The top security and intelligence top pras from both sides also discuss various issues including smuggling of arms, narcotics and cattle. The last such meeting was held in November 2015 at Dhaka in Bangladesh. Union Minister of State for Home Affairs Kiran Rijiju recently flagged in the Mount Kanto Joint Expedition 2016, which was recently organized by Indo Department Border Police and Indian Mountaineering Foundation. Chief Minister Bema Kantu had flagged off the 32 members' team on September 25th. The joint ITPP and IMF expedition team could only reach the last base camp and not scale the submit. Mount Kanto is highest peak of Arunachal Pradesh located on Indo China border.
Hundreds of army personnel, administrative officials and local people gathered at Akatala Airport to get paid a tribute to Naik Chitranjan De Barma who was killed in a militant attack on an army camp in Nakroda of Chamu. The coffin containing the mortal remains of Mater Indian Army Trooper Naik Chitranjan De Barma trapped in the dry color was brought in a special army AN-32 flight. Several army and state officials paid homage to the martyr for his supreme sacrifice. Tripura Chief Minister Manik Sarga visited the Dev Verma's hometown, Karingpara, in Kauai district to pay last respects. Joining the rest of the country, Nordi State observed the 29th World AIDS Day under the team Hands Up for HIV Prevention. In Manipur, the state-level function was organized by the Manipur State's AIDS Control in Imphal, which was graced by State Chief Minister Okram Ibobi Singh. As a part of the event, mass rally was also organized from Takel Lekai in which 32 non-governmental organizations working in the field of HIV and AIDS participated. Tripura too marked the day with school children, security forces, NGOs, among others taking part in a rally. Youth Affairs Minister Sahi Chowdhury, Health Minister Badal Chowdhury and Tipa Kamaka took part in a rally. Rajiv Gandhi University organized its 12th convocation in Alcatala recently. The governor of Arunachal Pradesh in Mekalia, V. Shangmukhanathan, praised the occasion. Speaking at the occasion, the governor asked the students to express their gratitude to their parents, teachers and educational institutes and also advised them to have quality life, high moral ethics and physical fitness. During the event, 6,338 postgraduates and undergraduates were conferred with degrees, while 16 candidates received their degree of Doctor of Philosophy. A panel discussion on the subject migration in the time of conflict was held recently in Timapu to discuss various issues related to migration of people. Speaking at the event, Nagaland State Minister for BWT, Roads and Bridges, YVK Hosu, urged the government, entrepreneur, NGOs and other stakeholders in order to tackle the current scenario on indigenous migration to other cities. Anthropologist Professor Bang Chi Carlson of Stockholm University and Dr. Dolly Gikon from University of Melbourne also presented their research project on the topic. Assam Chief Minister Sarpananda Sonowal paid homage to Dr. B.R. Ampatkar, the architect of Indian constitution on his 60th death anniversary. Various senior officials, along with people from all walks of life, gathered in Guwahati to pay floral tributes to the leader who campaigned against social discrimination of Dalit women and laborers. Dr. Ampatkar died on 6 December in the year 1956, and since then, Mahapari Nirvan Diwas is observed every year to pay him tributes. Bollywood singer Kailash Kher performed with his band Kailasha in Timapu recently, enthralling crowds with her Indian folk and Sufi music. The singer was in the city to perform as a part of Hornbill Hollywood Tamaka, organized by government's Music Task Force. Hundreds of music lovers thrown at a venue and witnessed the thrilling performances from the renowned Bollywood singer. Food lovers and gastronomes from all across Sri Lanka and other parts of India thronged in large numbers to the recently held Rilbong Food Festival in Sri Lanka. The popular food festival being held after a gap of 14 years proved to be one of the best platforms for some of the best cooks who showcase their culinary skills and creativity in preparing various dishes. Let's have a look at it. Creativity was at its best form as chefs from all parts of the region came together under one platform to display their culinary skills and creativity in making art out of food in the recently held Rilbong Food Festival in Shillong. The food festival was organized by the Rilbong Sports and Cultural Club as part of its ongoing Diamond Jubilee celebrations. Everybody has a food culture. We are trying to bring that culture together. The cosmopolitan, the diverse food culture. We are trying to bring our common platform so that people will see and appreciate what we don't know about other communities, what kind of food they offer. From a bird made out of sweet potatoes to a nest of noodles, which was a major attraction, 
The event drew huge crowds from all walks of life. There was also the vegetarian category and adding to this was the live cooking contest where participants cooked in the festival. I have come here with my daughter as well as my mother. All of us are participants. Okay. I visited many stalls. What was very interesting was how to make the salad. On the spot competition was going on. That was very interesting. Some of the participants came out with extraordinary displays that included a mutton keema dish made in the shape of a fish. Apart from the regular contest, there were various other contests which involved visitors identifying different Indian spices, answering a questionnaire on table etiquette, identifying Indian thalis and a general quiz on different aspects of food. Besides these, an exclusive array of sweet dishes like cupcakes, rabri, faluda, etc. were also on display. Wide varieties of pickles and local made potato chips were also exhibited in the festival. The Northeast is known for winning several laurels in the sports for the country. At the recently concluded ONGC Northeast Tamchon football tournament, many youngsters from the region showcased their football skills and the passion for the game. Take a look. Football is popular among the youth of the Northeast, which has given the country some of its best players. One of the most coveted Nordis football tournaments concluded recently in Delhi, throwing the football fans from the region living in the city. A fortnight-long tournament was organized by Delhi-based Tankul Naga Society in collaboration with Ministry of Donor and ONGC. The closing ceremony was graced by Olympic medalist and member of Racha Safa MC Maricom in the presence of Navin Verma, IAS Secretary, Ministry of Donor, SN Pratan, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Turner, Amazing Rikam, IAS Secretary, Ministry of Minority Affairs, Ram Muiva, IAS Secretary, Northeastern Council, and other dignitaries from the region. I feel very happy to see all the players and, you know, to motivate and, uh, of course, uh, uh, not only uh, not only today, even for the uh, upcoming years also, I want to support them and I want to you know, motivate them. Tona Ministry also played a major role for this tournament and tried to bring in as many clubs. One of my desires is to see crowd which is mixed, because uh, I always feel that there are more people from Northeast here than not from Northeast, and we want to have that uh, interaction. This year we are trying to have an exhibition match also with the, with the Delhi NCA club. But maybe sometime later we'll have it. So the champion of this tournament can play with a... Oh! <laughs> can play with an exhibition match here. The event also marked the celebration of unity, friendship and sportsmanship among all communities in terms of sports, music and culture. Looking back from the first year, this game has grown so much, tremendously. You can see from the crowd, the participation is intense. And we have been able to bring together all the Northeast communities, including the mainland people, to watch this display of football. It has also brought up together because it is a game that we love, football. And girls and boys are participating with enthusiasm. And quite a lot of talents are also being displayed in the field of culture. The closing ceremony saw performances from various music artists entertaining the football fans and kept them engaged. Ramkimi Cherpuk, the winner of Mizu Idol 2014, charmed the audience with her thundering performances. Maring Naga tribe also showcased and enthralled the audience with their beautiful war tents. The tents highlighted the valor of the Maring Naga tribe during the olden days. The final match between Muvanglai FC and Honbil FC was kicked out by Maricom, the chief case of the event. Our team are like experience of some like senior and then most of the players are new. So our team are youth team, so like we are having some problem but still uh, reaching 
till final and then we have sorted out our problem and all and then all the players are becoming so like understanding and then we have been playing so good and then everyone is helping each other so far that's why we reached the final after a thrilling match which lasted more than two hours Mwanla FC retained the championship for the second consecutive year the team won the tournament 8-7 after penalty shootout out and took away a cash prize of rupees 5 lakh and a trophy 16 teams from across the Nordic region participate the tournament. Stop of the war. I feel, I feel so excited now. Such tournaments bring the people from the Nordic region together and celebrate the unity, strength and togetherness. They also promote the region's talents and skills. Well, viewers, peace and development is a buzzword in the Northeast. Let's take a quick look at some development news from the region. The Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship recently organized a workshop on skill development at Raj Bhavan in Imphal. Governor of Manipur, Dr. Najma Haptullah and Chief Minister Okram Iwopi Singh attended the workshop. The workshop aimed to train people to develop small-scale industries like tourism, healthcare, handloom and handicrafts for better livelihood. U.S. Ambassador to India Richard Verma recently visited Agartala on a six-day maiden visit. During his visit, Verma visited Sundari Temple, State Museum and Indo-Bangladesh border where he attended the beating the retreat ceremony of India and Bangladesh border guards. Verma's trip was focused on improving connectivity, economic connectivity, trade investment, infrastructure, education and building connection between people of this region and India with United States. He also met Tripura Chief Minister Manik Sarkar and Tridus and discussed on the improving India-Bangladesh trade and connectivity through Tripura. He said to improve economic condition of people by providing opportunities of work. U.S. has arranged a two-day conference focusing on international and regional connectivity in Kolkata. Manipur Chief Minister Okrami Bobi Singh recently inaugurated the first state food processing park at Nila Kuthi in Imphal East. The park aims to provide space and basic infrastructure like power, water to several unemployed youth planning to set up their own businesses at the food processing park. With this, the state government has already taken policy decision to introduce Manipur's startup policy which will benefit both skilled and unskilled unemployed youths in the state. The total cost of the park is around 45 crores and has a total of 49 plots of 600 square meter each which are to be allotted to entrepreneurs. The park has facilities like cold storage, warehouse, drainage, sewerage and one effluent treatment plant. Speaking on the occasion, Chief Minister stressed on the role of private participation in giving employment to the unemployed youth. A two-day-long national workshop on lect insect conservation was held at Department of Entomology, Assam Agriculture University in Jorhat. The workshop was organized with an aim and objective to conserve lac and reintroduce lac in those areas where lac was cultivated. The scientists who took part in the workshop discussed on how it can be conserved, how to utilize, how to maintain and how to conserve forest through lac cultivation. The two days workshop was inaugurated by Kamal Malla, Bajar Barua, Vice Chancellor, Assam Agriculture University, Jorhat. There are only nine lakh insect research institute in India, namely Jammu and Kashmir, Ranchi, Telangana, Kerala, CAU Manipur, Punjab, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and Assam. Scientists from all the nine institutes and students from AAU, Jorhat attended the two days workshop. A three-day workshop on climate change reporting was recently held in Imphal. The workshop, which was jointly organized by Center for Media Studies, Department of Science and Technology and Indian Himalayas Climate Adaptation Program, was graced by Manipur Governor Dr. Najma Haptullah. Haptullah emphasized the role of media in spreading awareness about impacts of climate change and the need for its adaptation in the northeastern region. 
Well, we were standing Hornbill Festival kicked off amid much funfair in Nagaland recently. Tourists from all around the globe flocked to the picturesque Naga Heritage Village, Kisama, to witness the rich cultural heritage of Naga community. We have a report. Named after Hornbill, one of the most venerated bird species in the state, whose importance is reflected in a number of tribal cultural expressions, songs and dances of Nagaland, the Hornbill Festival is one of the largest celebrations of indigenous warrior tribes of the state. The festival drew people to the foothills below the lofty spur of towering Mount Jafu, wherein the Naga Heritage Village, Kisama, the venue of the festival, lies. The festival is organized under the ages of State Tourism and Arts and Culture Department to encourage inter-tribal harmony and promote colorful local culture and traditions as well as preserving the heritage. Colorful performances, rich traditional crafts, indigenous games, food fairs among others formed part of the festival which attracted large number of visitors. This is my first time to the Northeast so to be in the Seven Sisters and to be around all the people and the first time to the Hornbill Festival. I am inspired. Uh, it is a grand, achie a great achievement to bring together the indigenous societies of the Northeast along with the people from the rest of the world to see an indigenous community develop. The event was graced by the Chief Minister of Nagaland, T.R. Ziliang, and his Assam counterpart, Sarvananda Sonowal, along with the State Governor, P.B. Acharya. The guests were honored with the traditional Naga shawl, headgears, and antique neck pieces. Local dance troops dressed in their ceremonial traditional attires, which are different for each tribe, enthralled the visitors with their performances. Besides this, the festival also saw the cultural troops from the state of Assam performing the famous Bihu dance, leaving the crowd, especially the foreign tourists, awestruck. Naga people have successfully preserved their customs and legacy, which were on display at the festival. Coming here is a beautiful experience. Uh, I was not expecting Nagaland and the people over here to be so humble and so emotional and sensitive and they are so firm and strong at the same time. When I read about uh, this festival, uh, I read that there will be some uh, tribes which will be uh, dancing, singing and making all the musical, instrumental useful and uh, there will be handloom, handicraft stuff. But coming here, first of all, when I came to Nagaland, people over here are so nice. I just felt homely. The Hornbill Festival has played a great role in boosting tourism by attracting tourists who want to witness the Naga culture. Well, viewers, with that, we have come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. Do connect with us to our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at anyindia underscore ANI. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get latest news updates from the Northeast. I'm your host Chandrakala signing off. Goodbye and take care.